good evening everyone and welcome to the clap possible youtube channel today we will be taking up the rail vikas nigam limited now why is this in news this is in news because of the fact that very recently the government of india has bestowed upon it the navratna designation now what does that mean let's take it one by one so now the very first thing is rail vikas nigam limited it is a central public sector enterprise and we will get into that what that means and it works under the ministry of railway it was basically to bridge the infrastructural deficit on the indian railways and it was announced by shri atal bihari bai on 15th august 2000 and it was formally launched in december 2002 the mini gatnas was granted to this company in 2013 and it is after 10 years that this status has been upgraded to a navratna another thing that you can keep in mind is the name of the chairman and the managing director which is shri pradeep gor now let's understand what is this central public sector enterprise and what do these mini ratna navratna and maharatna categories mean so first of all a public sector enterprise is basically a company in which the share of the central government is 51% or more it was in the year 1997 that the government of india decided to accord such statuses this was not only to give it more autonomy but also to make it more authoritative in the global market all of these central public sector enterprises fall within the administration of the ministry of finance and the department is the department of public enterprises and there are three categories into which these central public sector enterprises are categorized one is mini ratna that's the lowest then comes navratna and finally a maharatna company so let us then start off with a mini ratna so a mini ratna company is basically divided into two categories category 1 is basically talking about the profit of that particular enterprise in the last 3 years which should be around 30 crores and it should also have a positive net worth now what is then the difference between a profit and a net worth so in simple terms your net income reflects whatever you know after deducting your expenditure whatever is left with you is your profit however your net worth basically tells you the value of all of your assets minus your debt category 2 on the other hand is not talking about a particular figure which is 30 crores in the case of category 1 but it also says that in the previous 3 years the company should have had significant profits and it should have recorded a positive net worth now in order for a company to become a navratna it should firstly be a mini ratna category 1 which was what was the case with rail vikas nigam limited there are 61 such companies now and as of right now um the 62nd mini ratna category 1 company has become a navratna the second thing that you should keep in mind is that there is a memorandum of understanding and the company must fall into a very good or an excellent category into in 3 out of 5 previous years now for that to happen the company should get around 60 or above out of 100 in the following parameters so one is their net profit their net worth their total manpower cost now how much money are they putting in um into their personnel and well obviously if you are putting in more than 50% of the money that you are earning into paying salaries you are not doing a good job what is the total cost of production in the sense how much are they making and how much are they putting in what is the cost of services how much is the capital employed what is the profit before interest and taxes interest in the sense you know maybe they've taken a loan to build certain kind of to purchase let's say certain machinery and using that machinery they are creating some kind of goods so the money that are that they are making out of it the profits you have to reduce you have to deduct the interest that they are going to pay upon the loan that was taken to purchase those machineries this is to that turnover or their sales or their revenue the intersectoral performance and their earning per share so that is how a navratna is decided as of today there are 13 navratnas and the latest one being rail vikas nigam limited so you must keep in mind this number 13 do we have to learn all of them ma'am i know that will be coming to your mind 
Well, as of now, let's keep it step by step. Let's right now just learn that there are 13 Navratnas. The last one is a Maharatna. Now, Maharatna must already have a Navratna status, obviously. Now, once you have a Navratna status, that basically means you're in well-established, profitable business and you have a substantial impact on the Indian economy. You have greater autonomy in decision-making and financial authority over other central public sector enterprises. A Maharatna company is a step up. So not only do you have a Navratna status, but also you're listed on an Indian stock exchange with a minimum public shareholding as prescribed by the Securities Exchange Board of India. Apart from that, in the last three years, so you can find this, you know, they're basically talking about the performance of the previous three years. The average annual turnover should be more than 25,000 crore. The annual net worth should be more than 15,000 crore. And the average net profit after tax deduction should be more than 5,000 crore. And of course, you should have a good global presence. And so right, right now, we have 12 Maharatna companies. And the names are right in front of you, Steel Authority of India, Coal India Limited, Gas Authority of India, Power Finance Corporation, so on. So I hope you understood what is the meaning of a Mini Ratna, a Nav Ratna, and a Maharatna. We should keep in mind that right now, there are 12 Maharatna, 13 Navratnas. And of course, you know, I'm not going to get into the list of the mini Ratnas because there are so many. So there are 61 as of now in category one and 12 in category two. That is all.